there's been a new movie coming out with Michael Fassbender. Now, Michael Fassbender is a really interesting story because no one's going to doubt that he is a world-class actor. I mean, he is phenomenal. However, while he just about was at the absolute peak and pinnacle of the business, he ran into a succession of, I'll just say, pretty bad movies that he made. Uh, one of which was one that we had a lot of hope for <laughs> with Assassin's Creed. Oh, boy. Then he, and that was just terrible. And then he made one that I get what they were going for, but it missed the boat, no pun intended, with The Light Between Oceans. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that was awful. That was so bad. And, oh, somebody brought it up earlier. Don't even get me going on Snowman. That should have been the next Along Came a Spider. It should have been the next you know, great serial killer mystery crime thriller kind of thing. And it was so awful. And then he had, uh, he, then he played Magneto again in, um, in uh, the X-Men Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. The Dark, Dark Phoenix, Phoenix, which, I, again, I don't think was as bad as some people make it out to be, but it certainly wasn't great. He's always good in the, in the, in the role, though. Oh, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's always good He never good phones in the role, it in. Right? So he's got this new movie called The Killer coming out, but that's... Interesting for one really big reason. I mean, it's it's a story I've heard before. An assassin who's now on the run from his employers. Okay, we haven't heard that a hundred times. Fine. <laughs> but it's being directed by David Fincher. And lest you forget about why we gush about David Fincher when we bring him up. I mean, just take, here's just a couple of his greatest hits. Take a, take a look at these. Just a couple of them. Seven. The Game. People forget how good that movie is, so you go back and watch it again. Actually, you know what? With modern technology and everything, I kind of feel like the game was a little bit ahead of its time. Mm. Uh, of course, he did Fight Club, Zodiac, one of your favorites, Rob, The Social Network. And then he was the director who, who kind of launched House of Cards. And then sticking with Netflix, then he did Mind Hunter. Uh, he did Gone Girl, which is unbelievable. And, he, and he's done tons more, right? He's just a phenomenal forward thinking ahead of his time kind of filmmaker and great storyteller so that was interesting but how would this one kind of turn out well it looks like it's turned out pretty well because it's playing in venice at the venice film festival and the responses coming out of it have been pretty damn solid as a matter of fact right now it's holding an 84 percent coming out of there and the reviews that are being read off are really really good the Irish Times says this, the killer allows Fincher to exercise his own perfectionist instincts in a raw entertainment that makes a virtue of its emotional distance. It may prove to be Fincher's first self-help film, which is weird to hear when <laughs> talking about an assassin film. All right. Uh, the Times writes, uh, there's a hint of self-righteous incel about him. Uh, see the Smith's fetish, which is what makes the movie interesting. Uh, IndieWire writes, it's as unfeeling as any Fincher thriller, at once predictable in its simplicity, but also strangely daring because of it. I kind of like the way he puts that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, David Fincher rebuilds the revenge genre with the fever and precision of a time bomb, one second away from going boom. Anyway, and it goes on. So as of right now, it's hit, sitting at about the mid 80%. You know, not perfect, whatever, but guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Hello Fresh. With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Kickstart a fresh fall routine with Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh handles all the meal planning and shopping to deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. They do the hard part and you get to take the credit. Hello Fresh takes the stress out of mealtime by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door. So this fall, skip that extra trip to the grocery store and have dinner ready in no time with America's number one meal kit. Like we've mentioned before, Ann and I are both working professionals and meal time is sometimes a bit stressful. That's why we absolutely love HelloFresh. It's nutritious, it's delicious, and we actually have a really good time making dinner together. So guys, go to hellofresh.com slash 50 Campia and use the code 50 Campia for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Campia and use the code 50Campia. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Rob, to me, as you're looking at a guy like Michael Fassbender, who again, I think is stupidly talented, like what he's able to do 
with a camera in front of him, what what he's able to emote, what he's able to make us feel as an audience is crazy. And truly, I think one of the biggest wastes we've had in the past five, six, seven years that he just hasn't been in the right projects. It sounds like working with Fincher, this might be finally something that he really gets to showcase his talent in here. Where's your anticipation level like for the killer? Well, it's to be honest, through the roof. I mean, this is also him reteaming with writer Andy Kevin Walker, who wrote Seven. And that's where, you know, after the sort of debacle that was Alien 3, Seven was really Fincher's first, quote unquote, David Fincher movie. And to see them reteaming after this all this time, and it's also based on a graphic novel, I'm really excited to see this. I had a friend who saw it and wasn't as impressed, said, well, it was nothing new, which, I mean, I can understand that. But, you know, like we said, like you said earlier, this is a movie about an assassin whose employers are coming after him. I mean, we've seen this before. But I'm curious, I haven't seen David Fincher's version of this or Andy Kevin Walker's version of this. And just looking at this still that's on frame right now, I mean, David Fincher, man, s few people know how to shoot a movie like he does. Yeah. And I, you know, just to sit there and watch his precise framing. And I know that he, everything you see, he, he gives us with such precision. I just love the fact that we're getting these kinds of films still. We got David Fincher's movie coming out. We got Martin Scorsese's movie coming out. We just talked about Oppenheimer. We've got we've got some of our best filmmakers giving us films in the next, well, now some of them have po been postponed. But we're getting an embarrassment of riches of films that I'm really excited about, and this is right at the top of the list. You know, you brought up something, and, and, and I'm glad that you did, the whole notion of, you know, we've seen it before. I, I'll complain about that sometimes, like with, say, the zo zombie genre, like, they're all the same. Like when you break it down, yeah, yeah. every zombie film is basically the same. But here's the thing. I can go into a restaurant. I have had, believe me, I've had many bowls of vanilla ice cream with chocolate caramel sauce and whipped cream. <laughs> I've had it many times. I can go into a restaurant and say, order some dessert. Give me a, a you know an ice cream sundae. I've had it before. But that doesn't mean it's not delicious and wonderful and fantastic. So like with the zombie genre, they're all the same. But is it good? So you take something like Train to Busan. Which is, okay, yeah, we've seen it. Oh, no, something's weird here. Why are those people attacking each other in the streets? I have no idea, right? We've seen it a hundred times, but it can still be delicious and fantastic if done right. Right. And yeah, we have seen this assassin plot before, but if you do it really well and really right, you deliver up a really good, satisfying dish. And I've always loved stories about, you know, people that we normally associate with being stone-cold killers or gangsters. When I saw The Sopranos for the first time, mm. oh, Tony Soprano has to go to therapy. And they mention this aspect with Fassbender that that he has some kind of a self-help idea. I haven't seen that before. I would like to see how does that play into all of this. So count me in, John. This is at the top of my list. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.